Mission Operations Technical Training School. The first command simply must arm our airmen to outthink, outperform, outpartner, outinnovate any potential adversary. Air Force Basic Military Training has an updated curriculum with a new focus on readiness and lethality. <laughs> the first command, the Air Force starts here. Welcome to the Air Force Starts Here podcast. I'm your host for this professional development podcast, Jennifer Gonzalez from the AETC Public Affairs team. As you know, this podcast is dedicated to bringing total force big A airmen tips, tricks, and lesson learned from the recruiting, training, and education worlds. In this episode, we're discussing a new force development tool for Air Force and Space Force professionals to grow professionally. The Developmental Special Experiences Catalog is a consolidated list of available learning activities outside the scope of formal training that have been validated as a potential means to obtain specific foundational, occupational, or joint competencies. Joining us to discuss the DSE Catalog is Mr. Jerry Perez with AETC A3BD and the Branch Chief of Developmental Special Experiences. Thank you so much, Jerry, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. So tell me a little bit about AETC, A3BD. What is this office and what do you guys do in it? Sure. I'd, I'd kind of like to start with a big picture, if you will. Uh, we're no different than any other Air Force organization in that we're here to support the national defense strategy. And, and everyone knows that our military uh, is probably the most modern cutting edge weaponry out there. But it's the people really that are the most important component of any weapon system and of our defense. So we play a part in that. We play a part in the force development effort that supports this strategy. So the office was established back in April 2018, and it was tasked to develop and maintain that DSE catalog, as you mentioned. And uh, part of our duties then involve working with other organizations within the government, our sister services, uh, to make sure that we can collect and catalog these uh, developmental special experiences or DSEs. So what is a DSE, a developmental special experience? So it, it's it's a term, the DSE is probably unfamiliar to folks, because it's, but it's not really a new concept. Um, there's DSEs include things that people are familiar with, like special duties that we try to do in AETC, let's say, fellowships, internships, things like that. So people are familiar with those type of terms, but those are all DSEs. So if we look at it in the simplest of terms, it's a learning opportunity. And, and to be classified as a DSE, you've got to meet four criteria. Uh, the first one is it's got to provide hands-on experiences that are going to be outside your formal AFSC or career series uh, training and education. But we really want to express that word experiences because it's more than just uh, let's say the education training you may receive to prepare you for that DSE. Uh, give you a quick example. If you were getting a continuous process improvement certification, either as a black belt or a green belt, you got to take classes for that certification, but it's actually the events that you have to take or conduct that make this a DSE because you're going to apply what you've learned. So that was the second one. The third one then is it's got to be offered more than once at a, at a unit organization. And the reason for that is we want to make these opportunities available to others over time. So it's not a one and done type thing. Uh, and, and finally, the DSCs are there to help you, as we've already mentioned, gain or maybe enhance competencies you might or might not have the opportunity to do within your primary career field. And that black belt or green belt in, in uh, CPI is a good example of that. So how important is it that our airmen um, focus on their professional development outside of their AFSCs? I think it's a it's a very important thing. The Air Force uh, and the Department of Air Force is not, it's probably not just limited to our arm of the services. But when you're looking at the military, especially in today's environment, you want a well-rounded individual, someone that is not just a, a specialty in one niche, although that's important. Uh, it's also important to have someone that is expanding their horizons in terms of learning um, and, and being a, most, a more viable tool for the military uh, so that they can help um, our defense of our country. And you do that by being multi capable and, and you're only going to do that by expanding your horizons. Can you tell us a little bit about the DSE catalog, what it is and the purpose of it? Sure. Uh, so like we talked about, uh, 
many of the DSCs are, are programs that people already know about. Uh, but for the first time ever, these are all captured in one location. So we've consolidated all these DSCs into a single catalog, and it helps provide that transparency we need uh, when we're taking a look at our future careers. Uh, so it'll help us shape those careers. Uh, so the DSCs then become uh, uh, valuable to help gain some experiences and maybe some competencies. And it's gonna be these knowledge, skills, and abilities that are gonna help with your upward mobility and career enhancement. So by putting this in a single catalog, it really does simplify research efforts. It's one-stop shopping, if you will. Uh, but I want to stress that the catalog itself doesn't really replace the application process. Each listing is owned and it's managed by that D DSE's organization. And so interested parties should still work with that POC to ensure they get uh, all the information they need uh, beyond the catalog or uh, anything they want to do with the application process. Uh, and Jerry, before this catalog came about, what were people using to find out about these DSEs or developmental um, opportunities? So that they were using essentially the assignment systems and whenever notifications came out, let's say for a fellowship, if one was available, uh, maybe you received an email letting you know that the window was open. And that's what makes the, the catalog, I think, a more valuable tool because the listings are always in there. They're persistent. Whereas in AMS or maybe talent management, you're not gonna be aware of the opportunity until it's open. And it may be too late because a lot of these opportunities require some prerequisites. And you may not be positioned and you know, be the best candidate for that application. So having it in the catalog that you can look at it anytime, whether it's open or not, allows you then to prepare yourself and make you more competitive when those positions are open. That's wonderful that you can really uh, future cast or, you know, long term goal your career uh, to meet those learning milestones. You know, if there's something out there that you're specifically interested in. Exactly. And they and actually a lot of these opportunities, if you look at the, the, the pyramids for development for our airmen, whether you're officer enlisted or civilian, uh, these opportunities kind of span that pyramid. They, they can be at the at the lower levels of the pyramid up onto the higher levels as well. So they, they kind of span your career. So where can you access this catalog? Um, the catalog can be accessed uh, anywhere. Uh, if you go to my vector, I'm sorry, if you go to my vector, uh, you can go ahead and get that catalog, but any, anyone can use it. I mean, it's open to the entire uh, Department of the Air Force, actually. Um, so our guardians and our airmen can both use the catalog, but you need to have a My Vector account. And if you don't already have a My Vector account, I, I really highly recommend you get one because it's going to be a very valuable tool for your career development. Uh, so once you log into My Vector, you go to the development plan menu item on the left of that toolbar, and it's a very user friendly catalog. So you can sort the information or listings in any way you like, whether it's by airman type with your officer enlisted civilian, you can sort it by rank, your rank, or maybe your AFSC or career series, however you want to do it, but it's it's user friendly. I think what do you, you know, I got the opportunity to get onto my vector and check out the catalog. And I I think one of the greatest uh, resources on there is that not only does it give you the prerequisites that you need to meet, but also a contact. <laughs> exactly. And we're, we're trying to do that uh, to ensure that we have the contacts and we're trying to make the contacts to where they're based on an organization, not an individual, because people move on, right? You PCS, you move to different positions. So we want to make sure that the that the information in there is is persistent and is relevant. So we try to list organizational email addresses or phone numbers so that uh, hopefully you'll be able to reach someone that that is responsible for that particular DSE. So on the on the catalog, you can filter it by your um, by your position, whether it's enlisted officer or civilian, you mm -hmm. can filter by interests or what are some of the filter? How, how can you filter on my vector to find um, opportunities that you might be eligible for? So there's several categories uh, within the, uh, the uh, an entry itself. So obviously we already talked about the airman type. If you are an officer, uh, enlisted or civilian, you can filter by that. Uh, component, if you're active duty, guard or reserve, you can filter by that. Your AFSC or career series, location, 
duration, any any kind of information that's in the catalog, you can filter by that information. So uh, it's it's very user friendly, so it'll narrow your search. So you don't have to look at all the entries in the catalog. You can just focus in on what's relevant for you. So you did mention that the DSE catalog was for every and airman, any and all airmen. I mean, that's includes civilians because civilians mm -hmm. need force development enlisted. Absolutely. Um, what if you could say one thing to encourage folks to get onto my vector and to check out the DSE catalog? What what is it that you would tell them? I I would say that it's a very important tool if you're trying to to deliberately plan what you're going to do in the out years. So it becomes a really important tool for the individual, and it also helps mentors and supervisors. In fact, I, I've done a presentation at a couple of uh, uh, events, and I've had commanders, former commanders, come up to me and say, I wish I had this when I was sitting in the chair because people look to me to help them on what they need to do next, and I just didn't have a tool to help me with that. So this this will help you deliberately plan your future uh, when you're trying to expand your learning experiences and get some of those skills and competencies, like I said, you may not have a chance to do otherwise. Uh, so if you want to impact the Air Force mission in ways that you may not get a chance to do in your, your AFSC, as an example, if you want to be able to recruit and grow our future airmen as, as a force generator, it's not an opportunity everyone gets. You know, so this is going to be one way to do that. And these positions, these force generator positions are a great way to help the Air Force uh, defend this country of ours. So if you want to expand what you know and what you can do for the Air Force beyond just your community, your career field, this is a way to do it. And you can bring some good ideas and knowledge you gain from this back to your functional communities as well. So it really sounds like this is a great tool for airmen who are um, ag aggressive learners and really want to take their uh, careers in their own hands. Exactly, and, and I'll be the first to admit, when I was wearing the uniform, I did not take an active role in, in <laughs> deliberately planning my future, and I wish I'd had something like this to help me with that. So, uh, but I think today's airmen are a lot smarter than I was at their age, so they, they are more interested in, in shaping what their futures are going to look like, and this is probably a really good tool for them to use for that. So what is one of the biggest questions that you guys uh, get when it comes to the DSE catalog when you're uh, briefing this or out and about? You know, interestingly, one of the we get a couple of them, and I think one of the ones is is whether a DSD is the same as a DSE. Both DSDs, uh, developmental special duties, and the DSEs are very similar in that they both give you an opportunity to get experience outside what your primary AFSC is. Right, you're going to be doing something that's different. Uh, looking at the catalog today, we only have about four of the, I believe it's 10, 11 DSDs. Uh, are in the catalog, so we need to review the rest of them and see if we can add them into the catalog as well. Uh, but the DSCs in general normally cast a wider net, uh, so we include other things. Most DSD opportunities are actually assignments, right? You've got PCA or PCS to get that assignment, um, but the DSCs include more than just that. So we've got opportunities like uh, like the Federal Executive Board or Black Belt that are details or things that you're going to do that don't require you to move jobs, but you're going to be doing something a little bit different as an add on to what you're doing. So that's the differences there. The other big thing that we get uh, that's important is how how do we fit into the big picture for assignments? You know, because a lot of folks think that the DSE catalog itself is the assignment tool. It is in my vector, which talent management is in my vector, but they, it is not an assignment tool. It is just an awareness tool. So if you are looking to look for an assignment or to apply for an assignment, you still have to go through the regular channels, whether it's uh, the AMS or the talent marketplace, you still have to go through those. But the DSE is going to help you inform you to hopefully when you're looking for those assignments, you're going to make a, a more informed search on what you want to do for your next career move. Uh, but we do work very closely with AFPC to make sure, like we had talked earlier, that the information that we have is current and up to date. So what's the future of the DSE catalog and AETC A3BD? 
Well, we're going to continue to grow the catalog. Uh, like I said, we've got some opportunities that we're working with our sister services. There's something that came down the other day talking about uh, more joint opportunities and exercise opportunities that be listed in the catalog. So we're trying to expand it. So the future, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, a year or two from now that we're going to have a lot of entries in there so that it'll become more of an awareness tool for the force so they can see everything that is available in our military not just uh, the air force this is a wonderful tool i'm so glad we're getting the chance to discuss it thank you jerry for your time and thank you listeners for joining us be sure to check out my vector to access the developmental special experiences catalog as a reminder you can follow air education and training command and the aetc command team on social media we're on facebook twitter instagram youtube and linkedin from our entire aetc public affairs team i'm jennifer gonzalez and talk to you next time on the air force starts here podcast